Let's watch part two. First of all, I just want to say thank you to Bricky for letting me react to his videos on Twitch and on YouTube. Thank you, Bricky. Sorry for pausing the video on there. <laughs> Everybody say hello. Uh, we just watched part one of every single Warhammer 40k faction explained. I actually had no idea about the assassin faction. Um, I now have a new waifu whose uh, merch and poster I will be ordering. Thank you. And yeah, I want to know part two because I myself am more into some of the chaos gods. I'm more into the Necrons and the Tyranids and I really like the orcs now. So this is what I want to see. This is what I'm more interested about. Okay. This is what I like. This is what I like. So let's go. Part two. Uh, if you're here from part one, I don't know. Hi. <laughs> say hi if you're, how, how what, what, say hi if you're from part one. Do let me know what is your army though. I am curious. Part two in a two part. I think, by the way, sorry, before we start this video, I believe that if I start playing tabletop, I'm going to do the orcs because I love the idea of just coming in with a bucket of dice gambling a bucket of dice away and having a great day part series on the i am Warhammer here for races. the meme if you haven't seen part one yet we do the imperium of man you can check that out in the description i am and here I for the meme recommend you watch that how's the volume good for this episode if you already have go ahead and keep on watching so that, after an entire doing. episode of nothing but humans we can now Yay! talk about chaos which involves humans again but a little bit less we also got demons and shit i love I just it felt someone grab my ass what like hard, Nick. So as I've mentioned many times before, we've nice discussed legs. the warp, the immaterium, mm -hmm. the hellish landscape, the purgatory dimension realm between the material realm of our existence. Now in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible. There are demons everywhere. Things are crazy. <laughs> All your minds and thoughts and emotions. You're painting your blood there. angels army. It they is look both so good. Formless they really and do empty. look empty. It is vast and tiny. I don't it blame you. It obeys the laws of time and physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing Your first of the army sort. was Necrons. Hodgepodge I'm really loving them. Of just Necrons is how I got into Warhammer, I think. Shit. And there are four I saw Dark Crusade and I thought, I need this. In chaos I need and the all of these, these little guys. These are the four major chaos gods. And if we wish to learn about chaos, we need to learn about oh, each and every no. single one of these chaos gods. First up, we have Korn, and he is the easiest. Korn is your classic Satan. He yep. is all about anger, murder, I had fighting, no idea blood, blood guts, for the blood death. You heard the term was blood corn. for the blood yep. god, skull I for the skull I had no throne. idea up until like That's two years ago. Corn. The whole idea is that Crazy. he is all about the fury and strength of battle. He doesn't care where blood comes from so long as blood Milk is flowing. For the corn he wants flakes. to fight and murder <laughs> and carnage and slaughter I love and it. death, 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 death. That is corn. Very simple to understand. Love it. Next up, you have Zeech, and Zeech is the god of change. Little T. However, tea. the god of change, it's little T permeates in so many different other ways. He's Uncle the most T. eldritch of all the demon gods. He Love has him. this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's your weird He's uncle. He's always conniving and scared scheming and doing his best to cause as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will I need to learn more about Zeech. I think I'd like do. him more. Every future if I got to know more about and him. setting and every type of, of I destiny love the way he looks, that's for sure. is all foretold and also changeable. It is set in stone while also completely random. He oh, knows neat. what I'm also the weird going uncle. to happen and we go. also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask Zeech a question. That question leads to three more questions. And those questions lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? What are and questions anyway? are you even anyway? asking the questions? Or are you simply so he's the original paths hipster? to answers? And, and other horseshit. Or kind of the original Zeech like, is um, just, <laughs> I'm what is gonna it? fuck with stuff. He is yes and he is no. Philosopher. He is the understanding and he is complexity. He is unknowable. I know. And that's I what think the God of Change is about. Spoiler Very bizarre. Alert. And he likes birds a lot. I have a I feeling. Um, Next up, we got. I may have Papa accidentally married him Nurgle. in a game. Papa Nurgle, he loves you for who you are. Probably I love not. you, Papa he will Nurgle. You just the same. But Papa Nurgle Even is about you rot, made pestilence, me sick. 
death and decay. Every time you get he sick, just think of it as of Nurgle's everything. gift. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much. Blessed because by Papa where Nurgle. Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. Pestilence. He is all about miasma and Yum. pestilence and large bloat and pus and, and organs and mm. people just being sedentary, sloth. He is the idea that everything will rot and decay and die. Nothing is Papa certain Nurgle giving besides you a good night decay kiss. <laughs> and death. I love that. All of us will end up the same way and broken down through just sheer <laughs> never ending decomposition. So the joke the that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that. Because we all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and wither. That's Nurgle, and he's got a general theme of, of course, <gasps> pestilence. And, my, that is so terrifying. He has an elder goddess as his so prisoner. That's generally Nurgle. He's pretty and easy he tests to understand his blades well. on her. And oh my goodness. He, he chonk! Finally, we have the youngest of the Chaos Gods, and that is Slanesh, also known as the Prince of Pleasure, or the God of Unspeakable Excess. Slanesh is generally referred to with sex. But it's not only sex, it's just that's a good avenue if you want to make sense. Yes. Sonesh is just the idea <laughs> of the senses of the body being cranked yes. to not just 11, but more like 17. See, we'll discuss Sonesh a little bit more when we talk about the Eldar, because they done fucked up. Mm -hmm. But she, he, it, or whatever, is mainly about just the excess of emotions. I and love that. Therefore, sex is generally a large part of it. Oh my However, god, the spikes on the tongue? Pain. Oh. Torture. Lots of pain, torture, but sometimes sexually. This better not or awaken drug, anything in me. Lots of drugs. So next this better not awaken on anything in extremes me. Extremes in happiness, extremes in sadness, extremes in pain and sadism and masochism. And of course, that goes along with the sex part of it as well. It's generally referred to with sex because of the color scheme very purple, lots of exposed genitalia. A lot of their My models God. have like exposed nipples <laughs> and stuff. Uh, and that I feel is seen. generally the theme you go for from a physical side. I feel a little but it really seen, embodies everything, a little hurt. Mainly pain. Heard and also the, the excessive amounts of emotion. So when it comes down to it, you'll find a lot of them have things like spikes or whips or any kind have that of BDSM spikes. style gear because it is unspeakable excess. The Prince of Pleasure. Everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening. That is Slanesh in a nutshell. Nice a little round. bit bizarre and a little hard to describe sometimes. But as we talk more about the Dark Eldar later in this video, you'll understand it far, far better and far more than you'd want to. Now you might be thinking, why would anyone ever want to join Chaos? They all look uh, horrifying, why not? screwed up and just Power, duh. Things, right? Well, the thing is, is that, of course, one, your mind is put into the warp and the immaterium, so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when you get into your head, especially if you're a psychic. This is a Sometimes great regiments of the spinning. less mentally strong <laughs> I love people, it. whether they be civilians or, say, low-level guardsmen or conscripts, can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff, and they serve their dark gods and whatever god they personally refer. However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. No, it's See, just the chaos. warp is every manifestation yeah. of emotion and being. I get every it. soul, it's just chaos. every thing of existence. They're doing the same thing everybody else is the doing. They're things. just conquering. All the different They're chaos bored. gods have get another it. side to their coin. Corn might be death, murder, slaughter, yeah. slaughter, but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest, trial by Probably combat, loyalty. and honor. Yeah. Corn will never lie Sorry, to not you. loyalty. Honor. Corn will never stab you in the back. Corn isn't about. Is he gonna stab you in the front steaming. though? <laughs> Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me. Get yes, in the ring. In We're the gonna front. murder each other hard right now. It may not be a good thing at the end of the day, but it Repeatedly. is that other side of the coin. Him and Zeech generally don't get along because Zeech does is that anybody get along schemer, with Zeech? <laughs> but he's also about the idea of hope. Where there is change, like everybody there is hates change Zeech. for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the <laughs> idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever I, you want. I don't blame that nobody trusts ways. him. That he doesn't deserve Zeech. trust. And of course, Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle does represent stagnation, death, and decay, he also represents banality an ending the fact that you can be mentally at peace knowing that you will end and how you will end 
Fear of the unknown, fear of change is not present with Nurgle. With Nurgle, everything will rot and die. I like that. And that provides that That's why I like him. That ability that this it's is that, over. Like, know it, we are knowledge all the that same, and we will all end the same. Ruin comes we to everybody. We know the meaning of life. Yeah. The meaning of life is to live and die I also love that he kind of looks like a hag. And with that, it brings At the boiling pot. Slaanesh he reminds me of the hag in Darkest Dungeon. While they are the excess of emotion, and I am they are hag, also the so, representation you know. of I like emotion. That. Slaanesh embodies happiness. Slaanesh embodies yeah. excitement Slanesh also looks and joy and pleasure. Not Hell only yes. in the sense of the physical, you know... I think if Nurgle bam, wasn't there, I'd probably love Slaanesh. But also and everything else, like Zinj. food and drink and uh, air yeah. on your cheek and sunlight, the feeling, emotion and I think for me feeling. it's Nurgle. All of that is also represented Slanesh. with Slaanesh. So and then you have to ask why are they always represented as super slightly evil skulls her. and spikes on everything Horn and want to murder everybody. I don't really got an answer for you on that one. My assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts, even if we don't act on them, and therefore they're projected in the warp more. That one's a little bit weird. I don't know. This is me spitballing right now, but I don't know. You need a you need a super bad guy. You already got the Imperium of Man. You need somebody to be a little bit worse than them. You know that is so a fun you got fact. Demons. Honestly, who I've cares? Never I heard of it. Buy, like, a bird magician. Look at him. Oh, so wait. cool. Sorry, one Took second. Him. Oh, sorry. I pressed space, but it accidentally turned off my display capture. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Finding all this. Who cares? This right here is why I would turn to Uncle T. Look at this right here. Kairos the Fate Weaver, Weaver, Weaver is his name. Holy cow. Look at him. Look at him. He'll sacrifice me in a heartbeat? Good. It was worth it. Now I know what it feels like to be a Momo. One head looks to the future, the other head looks to the past. <gasps> Ooh, holy cow, that's a bird, not a cow, Mata. I just want to buy like a bird magician. Look at him. So cool. <laughs> so combining all this together on the table. Ooh, they do look really cool. <gasps> Is that one of the Slanesh demons at the end there with the whips? Oh, that looks good. I also really like the blue manta ray. Okay, love this. I need this right here. I need this. I think these are cute. I love these green little guys. Like them. I mean, they also look good. These ones I think are fine. They look cool, but they kind of look pretty like... Actually, no, they, they look pretty cool. It's a freaking demon riding another demon. These ones I can skip. I can't see those ones super well. Love the little nerglings. Love them. Can't see these guys as well. These are good. These are nice. Up like these two love. These two need both of these right there. And this one, amazing. Look, it's like a chariot almost. <gasps> Top chaos demons oh, are generally very goodness. melee based. They run in, go really hard. You have lots of summoning and the whip ladies and demonette. Oh, so frail, that's but they remember there was um. In the previous video, I asked you whose head was the soldier holding, and you guys said a demonette. So that was it. Nice. They have special saves to make them a little bit stronger. It is a chariot. You got it giant looks amazing. demons and smaller yes. demons. You got hordes oh. of little boys and special saves to make them a little bit stronger. You've got giant demons and small. <laughs> why does he? Why does he have his hands like that, like a chicken? <laughs> Why does he have his hands like a little chicken? I love him. I love him. Sassy Nurgling. I love him. Why is he so Smaller cute? Smaller demons. You got hordes of little boys and tons of big guys. Demons are as they seem. Demons. Nurgle is slow. Uh, Corn is super scary in melee. Mm -hmm. You've got Zeech, who are far more into psychers and spell casting, and then Slanesh, who is all melee, really, really, really fast. Zeech is like and pretty spell cool. Casting, pink, and Slanesh, uh, I really, all, sorry, got, I really love. I know this picture is so low quality, but I'm really liking this a lot. I think you're kind of starting to see what I like, right? I love pastel colors. I love also gold and blood red. I love pastel colors. I love bugs. I love tentacles. I love spikes. 
Zeech, who I are far that. more into psychers and spell casting, and then Slanesh, who is all melee, really, oh, really, really so fast, good. but squishy, but in lots of hordes of tons. I of do love monsters and pain damage, of course. So overall, the demons and are a huge part of 40k and, and a women. massive threat to almost every single faction, with the exception of a but couple. But only like. However, the big part women. about demons is also transferred into the other nine Primarchs we didn't talk about, which are the Chaos Space Marines. Ooh. I want to know how they become Chaos Space Marines. So that horse, I don't know that much about. All of his boys, all of right. them in the Primarchs, the guy who they have all betrayed? also become Chaos Boys. And they oh. all have their own special Chaos Legions, specializing in so many different things, just like the Adeptus Astartes, the Angels of Death, the regular Space Marines. Chaos Space Marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular Space Marines. They have the same armor, you know, the same training and toughness. They just specialize in different kinds of things. And also a lot of their Primarchs have ascended into greater demons. <gasps> greater demons. Okay, him from Nurgle, love the way he looks. This is my very much an aesthetic. I love, 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 love the color scheme, the sword, the everything, Mortarian, love him. Love him, love him, love him. He's Nurgles, right? Based on the color scheme here. Things. And also a lot of the Primarchs have ascended into greater deep. Is it greater That's demons? a chaos Primarch. The demon Primarch I love him. Point. Gigantic, oh, it's not a sword. It's a sight. You're right. Hybrids it looked like a sword because I only awesome. saw the forward of it. To be honest, they look really, really cool. But them and their associated legions that Maybe they are part of are all kind of going future. out there we'll and causing a large ruckus for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of space marines, imagine that entire legion just converting to oh, chaos. Oh, is this Angron? The, I think it's like 15, right? It's generally right? pretty horrifying. There's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down. But you've got the Emperor's children with Primarch Fulgrim, loyal to Slanesh. These people. Fulgrim is what, like three, right? I think. People. They're just sensory overload. Ooh. Tons of drugs, Ooh. tons of torture. And I think Fulgrim is a demon Primarch right nice, now. And nice, oh nice, God, nice. I am terrified to see what that he man looks, looks like. He looks awesome. At least on the tabletop, because. Emperor's children are not good people. You've got the Iron Warriors, which are kind of like opposite of the Imperial Fists. Okay. Primarch Percherabo, I believe is his name. They're Chaos Undivided. They just kind of serve Chaos in a general okay. aspect instead of choosing one of the four. But the Iron Warriors are big on the siege and fortification, and they're basically entirely. This is not the them. Iron Fist, right? This is not the same guy. Remember when he was talking about the Primarchs? He's like, these ones are immovable. Like, you can, like, Punch him, they will never move. It was like the like the immovable. That's not them. That's a different Okay, good, good, good. Because they look different. For Chirabo, I believe, is also still alive, and I'm also very interested to see what he looks like because they are rivals. Demon it Primarch makes sense. You've got the Night Lords with Primar Conrad Kurz. Conrad mm. Kurz is dead, which is good because he's a sick fuck. <laughs> the Night Lords are generally about terror, terrorizing people okay. and terrorism. They're generally about fear and Probably so. You've got the World Eaters with Primarch Angron wow. still alive. Also, Angron I think is 15. Angron, XB, if, if I remember you think correctly. You've known an angry person. Angron is the angriest son of a bitch you mm -hmm. will ever know. Angron removed oh, he's 14. parts My bad. of his brain that didn't make him angry, so he could be angrier. I love this. Angron, also, this picture is. Mad. I'm sorry, but it's something's really funny about when you have like. Kind of a high, like this is a high Eaters quality picture, Primark right? Angron, and then it alive, goes into the low quality picture, Angron, and it slowly and becomes more zoomed person. in and less Angron quality. Is the angriest son of a bitch you will ever know. Angron removed parts of his brain that didn't make him <laughs> angry, <laughs> like, look at this. so he could be angry. <laughs> what is this? Angron, fucker's mad. Angron leaves You've got the Death Guard with Primarch Mortarian. Hey, he, I love him. I love the way they all look. I love the bells. I love the pestilence. I love the horns. I love and everything. They have their own special codex and their own major army. Death on Guard, tabletop. yes. Or Tarion himself is actually one of the models. And, and look, look at, at him. him. I saw look this. Look at him. It's I think he is the model that I saw that made me realize that I love Nurgle's armies. This is what I saw where I thought, yes. So cool looking. Of course, Nurgle based, obviously. So very slow, but very tanky. You've got Love the it. word bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment, but the word bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're the last I love my little Black Legion man. with Primarch Horus. Yeah, of course. Get fucked, nerd. You've got the Alpha Legion with Primarch. No way, Alpharius. they're also. 
Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Are they followers of T? Because look at the coloring. Omega. I love the way they Chaos. look. Chaos. We learn about them the other and finally, time. Finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with and Primark, them, Magnus, yep. the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Sons also have both their of own these look great. Just with the Death Guard. Mag if I wasn't into Necrons as much, I'd probably be really into the Thousand Sons. Primark, Magnus, the Nerd. Look at how uh, the Thousand cool Sons also they have look. their own book, Just with the Death Guard. Magnus is also a tabletop model. He looks wow. super cool, as you can tell, and they're all super heavily psyched. Yes, and yes, kind of yes, yes. I mean, look at them. I love it. 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 The Alpha Legion is the one that nobody knows who they're loyal to, right? They're the ones that always betray. Yeah, the ones that nobody's really sure who they're loyal to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, okay, cool, with cool, cool. all of these Chaos Space Marine factions, you can play as a lot of a lot of different ones, but the main ones they're that as you confusing can really as work Mr. at are T. standard Space Marines, well, Chaos Space him. Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. See, this right here, this is a really good way to describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with I'm their sorry, broken Nurgle, corpse of an emperor I might have to, to also is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot loving hide Mr. or flee T. or shield themselves from He's the triumph Aqua of and chaos. Purple and they are finite and we are love, unbound, I undivided. Aqua, they must not and err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. They strive merely to hold back oh, our fury gold. and might, and it consumes <laughs> them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we yeah, lurk within the darkness of their soul, in on the tip chaos of their and tongue, assassins. in their tortured dreams. We are a few them, of but <laughs> freed from the shackles of ignorance. And a few blood we angels, them, because they look so grown cool. <laughs> strong, evolved. We are them, Listen. so much more. As I'm here to spend my money. As that quote is, the saddest part is they're mostly right. Chaos is basically unkillable. You could probably, probably get a white rid scar of Space too. Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul but I need that them dies on a bike goes the, to the, the warp. Every the Chaos sword. soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Every demon you banish will return at some point. Chaos love it. is unstoppable. I love the it. The warp is unending. And while maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow, the resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just Ooh, thank keeps you, Captain. on coming. The Assassin and uh, barely being book, slow. is it a standalone? Chaos is by far or is the it like a trilogy? They are without number. Their Look legions are everywhere. Their and armor. Yeah. They're pretty scary. I love it. So, I promise, we're done with humans now. Let's talk about some Xenos. The Eldar. Show me everything. So let's talk about the Eldar, or also known as the Eldari, which mm -hmm. are a super hyper-specialized and very technologically advanced race of, well, elf people. They were, as well, responsible for the creation of Slaanesh. Yay! The newest demon god. How'd they do that? Sex. Debauchery on a world-ending scale. So back Art. in the day, it was just Poetry. Korn, Zeech, and Nurgle. And the Eldar are very, very ancient. Millions of years. These Eldar, however, have a bit of a sensory problem. You know, every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little they bit amplified wow. compared to the normal. However, with Eldar, this is not some of the art that I so saw of them. They look they so nice so here. They became so self-reliant, and everything became so easy. There was no requirement for food production anymore. There was no shortages. Everything was basically done. Everyone was so comfortable. And that comfort breeded this weird sedation. And that sedation breeded Yeah, because I only saw some of the older ones where they're like debauchery. riding the dragons and stuff. Debauchery. 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 I very much showed when a picture from Heroes of Might Magic so 5 of how I imagine that they look like. You will end up down this road of pure debauchery. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so powerful, things like feeling, I mean, happiness, sadness, the Necrons went to sleep because they were like, oh, we're not dealing with these guys. Screw them. 
and the desire to satiate these senses grew more and he said, more you know what? with worse Screw and them. worse debauchery. I have heard that the Harlequins... started Harlequins, off with things um, like sex and drugs. They're so the Eldari that worship chaos gods, right? Because these are the right? first things you generally turn to when requirements and they're killer clowns from outer so space. easily accessible. It would get to the point that made Sander Cohen in Bioshock look sane. Oh my All right? god. This is the kind of debauchery it led to. Love it was Bioshock. constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual oh, and I love sadistic the claw or masochistic on her armor. fantasies that only elevated and elevated. And this was species. Oh, sorry, they worship People another god. Started going Eesh, down darker, there they are. More Harlequins. Depraved, and more violent paths as time went on. However, some people didn't entirely take to that. Some of the Eldar were looking at they these depraved against... species that oh, they Oh, my bad. I misunderstood. I thought the Harlequins went after, like, I thought the Harlequins worshipped the Chaos God. But no, they're worshipping the only God that's left of the Aldar, Eldar. But they are, they're insane. They're insane. They're, they're wild. They're crazy. They serve the god of laughter, Chegorash. Sounds like Chegorath, but Chegorash. Actually, all gods are basically chaos gods. <laughs> they used to be... A, sorry, one second. There used to be an elder pantheon, but all but two were killed at Slanesh's birth. Mm, I see, I see, I see. Let's continue. And said, I no thanks for me, dog. I'm good. And they bailed. These are the craft world. Isha Eldar. is the one that they Nurgle on tests his uh, poisons on, right? Starships and his plagues on. Craft worlds. They believed in learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves on these giant craft worlds far in the that outer looks reaches cool. of space. They even had this thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with mm -hmm. the Imperium? Well, the Eldar had something way safer called a Webway. Webway. And really? the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved groups and clans that would spend their time in there. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. Wait. So the all Webway. of this continued and it continued and it bloated until Slanesh just burst forth yep all that emotion all that mental well thought processes i suppose all of this in such a condensed space don't forget this is all being shot all their souls as well into the warp that's cute that all nurgle kind of found himself a little right into the wife so what She's happened the goddess of Boom. fertility and Sonesh harvest kind of love that birthed. And very Hades Persephone percent of the entire Eldar population untold trillions trillions had their souls ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by Slanesh demons. Listen, the entirety of wife. the Eldar race he keeps her was in a eaten jar. alive Still. and their souls consumed to the Prince of Pleasure. Let me, let me imagine All things beautifully. All of them got fucked up. It was so bad that it literally Do you want to get eaten by Slanesh or be put in into Nurgle's the fabric jar, of the right? I don't know. Called the Eye of Actually, maybe eaten by Slanesh isn't that bad. It's like quasi horrifying gateway What's portal a little torture from between the Materium friends. and the Immaterium right next to Cadia. You know? <laughs> and it is horrifying. So this Slanesh, Cadia? also known Cadia as mentioned. She Who Thirsts by the Eldar, slaughtered the entire population except for a couple. Those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. That crazy crack, that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape. Oh yeah, Slanesh is Slanesh real bad. Nobody's got real their good. sights on them. Every time Nobody's real Eldar good, let die, me tell you that. Their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh, craft world or not. What about those people in the webway? Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. Mm, there we go. The, the Eldar Drukari, population okay. right now is so 
massively small. It is minuscule compared to any of the other pop. Well, most Orcs are good. of the other population. I mean, vegetables are good, universe. right? Mushrooms the Eldar are good. are consistently are having <laughs> issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from Sonesh, they realize their entire species is doomed and they understand it very well. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though our dreams once overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot have blot they, out um, the hateful glare. Have they really gotten to explaining so Slanesh is mainly hunting the the Aldari, right? Like she is just mainly like balls to the wall. She's killing them all. And when they die, their soul comes to her. No. Oh, one second. I have to. She's just chilling and their soul comes automatically to her. Have they really explained why their souls come to her? Every Eldar is, is tied to her, and she has a claim to their soul. Hold on, give me one moment. I have to... Ugh, it's hard being a YouTuber. She's made from them. Yeah, that I know. So they made her, which means that now, basically, they, like, they have to keep feeding her and creating her. Um, her birth basically linked her to the entire elder race. Okay. Now question. Um, has, why has she been exterminating them? Just for fun? Or were they all right? Because... They seem to be doing pretty good until she came along and suddenly she just killed all their gods. Because they're yummy and she's hungry. So, girl dinner, I love it. Okay, so when she eats them, she grows in power. Okay, so... the ex So, bringing it back to my first question, which is... Is she hunting them? And people are like, no, not really. She is hunting them. Her birth insta-killed a lot of them because of like the chaos and the destruction. And she is not actively killing them. But for sport, I guess that is actively. Hunting suggests she needs to do anything. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Mm. If they show up, she's not going to say no. Definitely hunting them, but chaos plays the long game. Okay. It's just a hobby. Okay, that makes more sense. So it's just kind of like they got unlucky. And uh, this is kind of an explanation that their excess birthed this and now they basically doomed their whole race with it, right? Which is interesting because in Infinite and the Divine, um, the Necrons basically, from what I understood, went to sleep. One of the reasons the Necrons went to sleep was because they predicted the rise of the Eldari and they knew that at their peak, they could not fight the Eldari. So they went to bed until whatever. They knew something bad was going to happen to the Eldari. They knew that the Eldari were going to rise and they were going to fall. So they went to sleep until the Eldari fall, basically. Which was really interesting because if, if you know a bit more about the Necrons, they also had some stuff happening. <laughs> Yeah, they were weak after their war in heaven. So they're like, you know what? We're going to go to bed. We're going to go to bed. We're going to sleep a little bit. We're going we're gonna to take a little nap. We're going to take a little nap until the Eldari basically um, die again.
The Necrons thought they'll outlive all their problems. Hey, I mean, they're not fully wrong. Okay. Let's keep going. That's interesting that... Hmm. It's very interesting that when humans die, their souls go to the God Emperor, who's quote unquote not a chaos god. Um, this is like putting Slanesh and the God Emperor on a very similar place. They don't? Not exactly. They go to the warp. Oh, humans believe that they go to the God Emperor. Oh, but it doesn't mean it actually does. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wouldn't this make Slanesh so powerful if she basically has a claim on a lot of souls for free? If... She's the youngest. Mm, and there are not a lot of elder left. Yeah, because she killed them all. She already got like 95% of them. Mm -hmm. We know the chaos gods don't have a claim on those souls without proper worship. That's about all we know. Mm, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Slanesh will kill itself at some point. That feels like the right way, right? It feels like Slanesh will eventually kill herself with or themselves with their hunger. That makes sense. If they got birthed because a nation or a people just went into excess and then they will then feed themselves maybe into excess as well. That would be a really nice storyline if they did that. That would be a really, really good storyline. I don't know if that's going to happen that way. Anyway, let's continue. Oh, I keep accidentally closing my display capture. And Blair of the red moon's eye. The she was punishment for the, the Eldari. She has no reason to exist when the they're gone. With all the of a demon that is dreaming, That's casting its shadow over I like all that. we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place. I like that. And it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen I like since that. the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son is coming and all Thank my you, Michael, steps for the lead towards <laughs> it no matter that i walk other paths i see the stars stain red with the blood of the monkai and though their wars do not concern me i would gladly let them destroy one another i know that to avoid this fight is to condemn my race will i can't wait to learn more doom, about and though the all i see is big darkness e, mr I know emperor that i will not flinch from my destiny and now let's talk about cute plastic models. Yay! Bro, I'm straight up not having a good time. Let's, I want to talk about the models. The first race we have for the Eldar are the craft world Eldar and living in those craft world stars, Look as I mentioned earlier. At and that. each that of them have their incredible. own kind of craft world, almost like a space marine legion. Each craft world is it's in itself its own special kind of group. And the okay. Eldar themselves <laughs> are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons of psychers across the entire mm -hmm. Eldar population, and their weaponry God, and abilities so are cool. fast and extremely hard hitting, but of course, rather fragile. Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. They are all over the place in hey, confusion and hey. trickery on hey. a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar, in their own right, fast. really rely on this to keep their species alive. Fast they AF. need to think about deception and the strangeness of what they That's do. It. They truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. 
However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These craft worlds hold millions upon millions of people. And as they continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft Ooh, worlds expand, that is a, a few cool looking ship. Hurts a lot, oh, I love the web design. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It's that they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. They're still a doomed race. A being little sucked bit. into Slanesh every time someone dies. Mm -hmm. But they are definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. For. Eldar are fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. Okay. They also call humans Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, that is a derogatory Monkai. slur for humans. Oh, sorry, in the War please don't cancel world. me for um, using a slur. I said it before I realized well, it was a slur. You can't in your oh, game call people cancels. Matara Khan calls humans monkeys. On the monkeys. tabletop, exactly what I said. Not very tanky. Generally. Legally distinct Protoss, right? What is this legally distinct Protoss with the cone heads and the yellow and the blue? The Protoss are the fake Eldar, right? I did hear about that, that StarCraft was supposed to be a Warhammer game and then they couldn't get around to get it all, so StarCraft got released. So, um, Protoss are knockoff Eldar. I said it. Yeah, StarCraft was supposed to be a Warhammer game, but then they just couldn't, like, get around to all the rights. And the Tyranids are Zerg. I have to say, I love the Tyranids more than the Zerg so far. <laughs> I just don't really love the color orange. Generally pretty squishy. So... Hit, like, trucks and move at Mach 5. Fast, hit hard, die fast. You know. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only oh carry on. Goodness. It is a message even a human can understand. Eldar. So, Drukhari. Yes. Let's talk about the dark Eldar. She oh, looks exactly how I thought I'm she'd look. Fucked up, he's fucked up. That's fucked up. So, those people I mentioned, I feel the very Webway, Heroes of Might and Magic Dark Elves vibes. And the depraved people of the Eldar. In the Webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. So that's like has them, but it has them on like by the pinky finger. They are worse. And they're Good. slowly being consumed Good. by Slaanesh. Good, I love that. But they found out they can stave her off by doing Slaanesh things. Huh. The Dark Eldar Murder are by and far torture the and worst, corruption. most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, yep. and brutal race in all of Warhammer 40k. These are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction to is go to into do planets, more awful raid things them, and take as many slaves as they possibly oh can my God. to torture them for one death is five, a mercy feels ten, that way huh 20 a million years because that torture will keep them from dying. Oh my they look God. very BDSM style too. They definitely have a lot more spiky bits and they have a lot more of that kind of leathery. Who is the dude VTuber? His model is advanced. But He's one of those flesh example, tubers, let's they say call you are them. an upstanding imperial citizen, living life He's on a, a regular planet. He's a VTuber with a human you avatar. By the Necrons. Yay, the my Necrons people. will shoot you with a de-atomizer. My little guy. And you will be destroyed in a millisecond, and that's it. Not Warcraft was originally meant to be uh, you Warhammer. Are invaded by Starcraft Chaos was meant to be a Marines unique setting. Ooh. You take a bolter shot to the head or a chain sword across your stomach and Thank you, you can Vero. cut in half. Painful, but not the worst. Uh, the orcs arrive. They beat you now to I death. Now I know. Hurts, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, Tyranids, they, they eat you alive. Yeah. It's pretty rough. Like, wow. The Dark Eldar. The Dark Eldar. Torture. Uh, this is going to get a little graphic. Torture. Torture. You pray you die. You don't. Yes. You are instead taken as a human slave. Oh, God. Your life will be endless work and agony. Oh, God. 24-7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. Oh. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. No. They will inject oh, Sorry, I keep, pain. I keep pressing spacebar when I'm on the wrong screen, so it just turns off my display capture instead of pausing my YouTube video. A while back, Henya asked me this question. She said, what would you do if a zombie apocalypse started? And I was like, look, how, how serious do you want me to give you the answer? How serious do you want me to be? And she goes, be serious. And I said, I would kill myself. Death before torture. 
death before torture. Being tortured forever and then they're reviving you to re-torture you. Just let me die. Just let me die. Based, like, uh, it's not worth it. Directly into your nervous it's not system. worth it. They will slowly run razor blades mm -hmm. across your skin. They will flay you and just pull out your teeth and your fingernails nope. one by Give one. Give me like a little poison tablet. I'm good. And your skin and wait for it to grow back so they nope. can do it again. They will murder and Ugh. torture and oh. use the R word, it rhymes with grape, oh. your entire family in front of you and do the exact same thing Oof. to them. You yourself so will like also the be middle ages. rhymes with grape anywhere <laughs> you know? and everywhere possible. And this will occur for 20 years oh, God. until you are no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted, crushed, and twisted into some form of trophy. A fleshy Ooh. trophy, or a ring, or a couch, or a TV stand, or perhaps a wonderful hat. While you the number are, one course, rule for guards facing the dark Eldar is don't let them take you alive. you will become a moaning, fleshy right? trophy for eternity. Don't let them take you alive is all and we got to say. is what happens when you are taken by the dark Eldar. They are the most depraved, most horrifying race in all of 40k. They look the part. And they do it <laughs> so, kind of so they like all don't world. die. Yeah, they are literally forced sort of. to do this. Because if they don't, Slaanesh's grip sort will of. get harder and they will have their souls pulled away. So long as they keep doing this, Slaanesh is like, you're doing good, man. You're doing <laughs> solid. You keep, you keep that shit up, you elf I love bastard. how the only way to keep Slaanesh away is to do worse stuff than it took to even birth her. It took awful things to birth her. But if they just keep doing, and you know what the worst part is? I, okay, I kind of feel for them. And let me explain. They're just doing it to save themselves. They're just trying to save their species by doing that. Right? Like, it, it's, they're just doing they also like it. Well, look, you can like what you do. <laughs> I'm not against that. I mean, hey, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Am I right? <laughs> I mean, hey, it's nice to love your job, isn't it? <laughs> I like how nobody, nobody is, is with that's, me on this the, one. That's the Dark Eldar. That's the Jukari. Nobody is they with me on horrible. this one. On the tabletop, they're actually kind of like Eldar, Sorry for but being such a more extreme. <gasps> they are even okay, squishier. Okay, can we stop though? Okay, I know, I know they're bad. I know they're bad and they suck, but look at that ship. Look at this pirate ship clad in black. Amazing. Look at these little guys. They look like spiders of the, oh, wow. Look at her. I'm going to collect a few. I'm just letting you know right now, I will collect a few. If bad, why stylish? If bad, why model looks so good? Huh? If evil, why cool? Than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, they look skirmishers, so cool. really quick speed, like get around admit. them, do a lot of damage, get away kind of stuff. That's the most of the Dark Eldar. Look up the definition of grim dark in a dictionary. You'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Republic Commando. A quote from uh, Mr. Vect. We are the Evil lords of cool. despair, masters of terror, dread and agony are our meat and wine, and they are plentiful indeed. Dark Eldar. Let's talk about the Harlequins. Yes, the little clowns. Wait, they also. Oh, I thought they had a fleur de lis, but it's not. It's a different symbol. Don't you want to have some fun? The Harlequins I they had the are same a bizarre si race. Okay, wow, they look cool. They're demonic clown performers. Wow. They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, but in a more clown theme. They're, they're artists of death. Clown and perfectors time. of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They guard something called the Black Library, okay. which is this giant tome of never-ending knowledge deep in the heart of the- <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at this one. He's posing in the background. 
He looks like he's just posing. He's like, ooh, yes. The Eldar Webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegorok, I believe okay. is how you pronounce Kegorok. his name. He is the laughing god. But it's the Eldar's laughing god? And these are the Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns, okay? So imagine the things that an Eldar, these depraved individuals, ooh. Have they explained why all the arms? Like, I know why the tech priests have all the arms. They're robotically installed, but these look almost organic. More arms, more useful. <laughs> more arms for touching yourself. <laughs> to better torture with, my dear. Okay. They look really funny. cool. And this is the god hey. of that. It's, it's a horror clown. These are gods I love of having more arms. For us normal people. For them, they're like, oh, oh, oh it's so funny. Those they're arms all used dying to be human. Horribly. They don't look very oh, human. Oh, oh, honk, honk. They're very bizarre and difficult to describe. Uh, they've escaped the ruinous yeah, powers Yeah, they almost look like shinobi somehow, clowns. But their main thing is guarding it's that cool. black library. And the Harlequins just... They're demon clown performers. They're barely <laughs> any <laughs> models on the tabletop. All right. I'm sorry, but this looks cool. They look, I can't tell if this, it looks goofy, but it, because it's goofy, it looks cool. Right? Like it's goofy, but cool at the same time. I love it. Painting them as a nightmare. I can see that. I can see that, but they do look really cool. Top, they're... Yeah, not all Warhammer minis look goofy, but I feel like a lot of the, like, any humanoid ones look kind of goofy. Any humanoid models instantly Good look melee? a little goofy. They're, they're demon clowns. I, I love it. I'm not they sure. They look great. I, I got a quote. It is too easy for an Eldar to embrace they do the look like they're from virtues Joker of chaos. From the, for the Batman. nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar. And to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. Mm -hmm. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but mm -hmm. merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. They're very strange. The Harlequins, Drukhari, Eldar, they are an anomaly that I hate that I discovered this seem completely easy to understand. While I have access to your money. They range from rekindling their civilization it's to bad. horrifying murder and also clowns. They're all over the place. I'm going to have so they represent many. Quite well and are rather interesting, especially with it's the whole It's going to start the addiction. So, yeah, Eldar. Now, <gasps> bugs. Come on, they're following me, Ma. They're following me. These, the bugs. The bugs. The Tyranids. Now, you want to talk something a lot more fun, a little My more simple than all this cousins. crazy Eldar shenanigans? Let's talk the Tyranids. Bug They're hungry. bugs. Do they look like Zerg? Bug Hell yeah, they look like Zerg. You want to know why they look like Zerg? Because they were actually supposed to uh, be. Lore of Matara Khan. That infested Kerrigan right there. Big inspiration. From Matara Khan. Huge inspiration. To the point where I think my my like when I contacted um K Cross to design my model, it was mainly pictures of infested Kerrigan <laughs> in a lot of different poses. And initially I was I was wanting kind of like a flesh suit with scales. But then we decided, you know, for the whole monster in a dress look. It was initially kind of gonna gonna be kind of like this with the Hollywood dress. Uh, look up, um, look up like dresses to murder your husband in. There's uh, there there's this like style of Hollywood dress that, yeah. But hey, who knows? Maybe I'll get infested further down the line in the lore. So initially, too, with my design. Um, if you notice, I have like purple, right? Like I have like purple and um, like my, my, my limbs kind of go up in a different color. 
initially on my limbs, I had black fingers and black toes initially. Initially, I had black fingers and black toes. So just saying. Just saying. Hold on. I have to. Oh, wait, I have to. There we go. I have to get you back up. Every time I open my other thing, I have to get you back up. Dresses to murder your husband is a thing. It is a thing. There's like a whole style of dress and it's like murder your husband dress. You know, it's a thing. It is indeed, indeed a thing. What's oh, oh, Oops, I pressed the, hold on, give me a second. I keep, when I press space sometimes, but I'm on this screen, it spaces uh, the wrong Starcraft screen. Starcraft was supposed to be a 40K game in the beginning, hence why they look so much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, kind of space marine -y. those Marines, huh? That yeah. A space marine -y to me. Maybe. Very space marine -y. You really fucked up on that one, Games Workshop, didn't you? Incredibly Tyrians space marine. Giant infestation you can press K to pause. Or you can press space bar to pause. But the thing is, I'm like right now I'm on the other giant, monitor, right? Extremely and this is me on this monitor. You can press K to pause, right? But you can also press space, right? Hive Same thing. mind organisms that are basically all about absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to <gasps> evolve and mutate I to be love. extremely potent and powerful and kill and eat anything in their path. They are I just probably my the least evil faction in all right? of 40k They're because just all they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom hungry. nom the entire galaxy. They hang Oh, K and always we pauses and spacebar works as a click. But also, Thank you, I've Tyranid learned. Hive Mind has a presence in the warp. In fact, Look. Tyranids in their own right have a massive the little presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically, where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird Love the ability to kind staff. of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet. And how do you get help across the stars? Well, you need the warp because you need that for interstellar travel. So with people unable to call for help from the Tyranids, these are just easy pickings. They're and just an hungry. entire giant Tyranid high fleet comes out of Oh my goodness. It actually looks like, um, have you ever seen shrimp when they're swimming in the water? It actually looks like little shrimp. I love it. They look like long little shrimps. And just will <laughs> massacre, absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come in so many varieties too, all no, in look, based look at the on little what is important. Guys. Tiny little ripper swarms for little scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way to the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord, to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets, and even something as crazy as the Hierophant Bio Titan. Oh. The Tyranids come in all forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is mm -hmm. no way you can plague them or blight them. They have extremely strong armor, mm -hmm. carapaces and mm -hmm. such. Tyranids are, are nigh perfect organisms oh and God. are pretty spooky when it comes well, down they've eaten to a lot how of they handle other organisms all their genetic material. To get there. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying oh organisms to spread across the them. galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the Tyranids is? We might be surrounded. There have been like around six or seven Tyranid hive fleets behemoth chronos all these different kinds of hive fleets and they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points different sections of the milky way galaxy have had different tyrannies so you're through. saying we're surrounded and that is horrifying i love because it because as far as we know we could just be surrounded on all sides by tyrannids the only reason you may not hear a whole lot about tyrannids is they because it's a little everybody. bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters all these giant bugs swarming in killing and eating everybody and evolving well, i mean as cool as there are there's some cool characters the swarm lord old one eye you can't really have a whole bunch of major character based stories around them as awesome as they are they're simple they want to eat you they want to eat they're you and absorb your biomass they are simple bugs if you want something it's a also more a complex, rumor that we're dealing with just the scouting levels. fleets i can have all the pot i want i get around this... faster than walking okay one of the reasons I have decided to learn more about Warhammer lore, spoiler alert, 
uh, is because I have read Infinite and the Divine, Brutal Cooning. I've read a few books. I have played a few games. And we just did Infinite and the Divine for book club. And we reread, I reread Infinite and the Divine. Spoiler for Infinite and the Divine. There is one part of the, of the book, I'm going to try to be vague about it, where there's a lady that performs with a mechanical arm. When I read that, I just read it as the lady performed with a mechanical arm. I didn't think anything of it. Until you all explained to me that, no, 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 she is actually the descendant. You know, in the book, there's a little bit of, of, of tyrannids. There's a little bit of that kind of stuff. Wink, wink. Again, not really a spoiler, but I didn't realize that because I didn't know enough about gene stealer cults. So I decided, okay, this is it. I need to know more about, I almost said Minecraft. I need to know more about Warhammer so that I can kind of know everything. Yes, the spoiler has ended. Can you let that person know? That the spoiler has ended. I tried to keep it very vague, but let's find out more about and Gene Stealer. And wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. Gene Stealer cults are a special brain of tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. Uh -huh. And by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these re like regular humans, pray and believe into their tyranid hive mind gods. And these brood lords and you I miss a lot of stuff until you watch the book. All Club can Bod. turn an entire world. It will be even better. All next based time. into gene I've stealers, learned. and these are called gene stealer cults. An entire high world of the Imperium can be turned That's into crazy. nothing but servants of the tyranny. Crazy, crazy, crazy! Just crazy. by infecting them and screwing with their genetic code. A infested bit. Kerrigan, you know, infested cool Terran. Like Here we go. Max look. Which is really neat. They are definitely one of the bigger threats to the Imperium besides chaos. I, I keep saying biggest threat to the Imperium. They're up there though because Pray you, to the Omni Momo. stepped on a bug in middle school. <laughs> I mean, the Omni Momo does asshole. have four arms. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. We don't even scale. know they're infected. And That's the best part. And all we can do part. is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters part. it unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Ooh. Tyranids, they're cool. But I think it's cool as the orcs. Every <laughs> spring's gone red. That means I'm super fast. <laughs> orcs, 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 orcs. I fucking love orcs. So I think if I yes, play tabletop, the, the green monsters, the I green tide, the green. I just skins. want to throw fifty orcs, dice. They are and in hope fact for the a best. race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons, they're big boys, they have axes, and they have got big old teeth and they want to kill everything, and there are so many of them. The only reason they haven't taken over the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering We've each talked other. about it briefly. Orcs but are so cool. They're orcs basically don't have philosophy. Super orcs don't strong have existential psychers crisis. without even realizing it. Who's the biggest orc? You they're doing, that guy, you know, because he the biggest manifestation. orc. He big orc. Big orc knows best. You he win just believe, the power of imagination. Ship fly and ship fly. Which of is all crazy. the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to you know, comprehend. They wage war they with bend machines reality, that should exactly. not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter they have a each collective other psychic as the enemy. Power. Which again brings them back to the mushroom thing, right? All logic. As orc, mushrooms kind of, I don't know how to explain life. it, but they grow in kind you're of a cluster. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He's he the is the orc. boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent which is just hilarious to me. Those are orcs, you you fight, you like to fight. Your whole purpose is to fight. You wage war because you want to wage war. Oh. You got your boss over there and you better listen to the boss because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight because orc dead. And orc dead is, orc dead can't fight because orc dead. Orc orcs. dead. They scrap together machines out of parts that don't Orc's make any dead. sense. And because they believe, they have the mental imagination that that machine will run, it'll run. If that machine's out of gas, you're Doesn't driving matter. that machine with your fellow orcs, and the biggest orc is behind the wheel. They have like a collective delusion like, oh, magic. Oh, Zog, we're out of gas. And the big orc is like, no, we're not. 
I filled the fucking gas tank up earlier. And, and then the it other just drives. Like, oh, yeah, I, you did do that. And then you turn the, the fucking mech back on and it works again. Does it have gas? Probably not, but it works. The I'm power of imagination. They paint well. things red because it makes them think that goes faster. They paint things purple Invisible. because it's the sneakiest color. You want to know why? <laughs> you ever seen a purple orc? Didn't fucking think so. I Orcs love them. are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the Eldari time frame. But that, back then they were called Crooks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. Now they're just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so are anybody many wondering orcs. There are about as many orcs as there are Tyranids. You will many know more, more about the orcs. Who knows? But, but it is a very on, comedic know, relief. Murdering book. each other, so it's not too I bad like of an comedy. issue. Orcs are entirely <laughs> I like comic the laugh. relief. Their stuff is slapped together. That makes no sense. Their vehicles don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it You've works. You've never seen a blue orc either? That hey, it works. Kind of lucky, isn't Orcs it? Orcs care only about who is the biggest orc, and they will follow the biggest orc. And then if they want to be the biggest orc, they'll challenge the biggest orc. Until they're and the biggest orc. when they go and they issue a wa, a wa is just war in orc. Wah. They murder everybody and everything in this giant tide of green orcs zug, zug. who are just excited to be hitting something. Mo they don't care Lord. that they're hitting Eldar or zug, the Imperium zug. or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to beat they shit up. They just want to fight. That's orcs. I love them. And on a tabletop, they are a total coin flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. Until I, have I never start met playing someone orc. Who plays orcs <laughs> and is ever just a bad guy or because you haven't guy. met me yet. Orc players Ricky. have this kind of fun to them. I will be the one them, toxic orc player. You are player. completely submitting yourself to RNG. So here's the thing I have really guardsmen, good RNG. Imperial guardsmen, when they shoot. Not to be a fungus, but I have insane luck in games i'm not even kidding i have insane luck in 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 um in gambling i really do i'm not even kidding maybe maybe it's because i only remember the big wins yeah i must have been like a keeper of luck in another life or something you know um i'm telling you it's either i have selective memory or i'm insanely lucky I'm just saying. They roll a dice and on a four up, they'll hit their target. They have a 50% chance. Space Marines, pretty good. They hit on a three or higher because they're well-trained. Adeptus Custodians, they hit on twos because they're That's super well-trained. Orcs, they hit on a five or higher. Hey. But if they roll a six, they get to make another <laughs> shot with anything. From the dinkiest pistol to the biggest show. rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Half of their stuff will blow up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery <laughs> and you just kill an orc. That's funny. They're so wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you I roll well, you. you roll Oops, high. And you leg. keep rolling high, you are going to crush people. I just got to get loaded dice and I'm good. You lose. Oh my God, why is she always rolling orcs. sixes and fives? That's what happens when you play orcs. She's just that it's good at rolling. Flip, which is why you can't be a salty bitch just when you cheat, play orcs. Just cheat, Things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're going to have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, Me. You're, you're going to play some I want to be orcs. stupid and silly. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, let's talk about the Necrons. Love them. Love my boys. The Necrons are spooky, scary skeletons. I have the Oricon on pre-order. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back <sighs> in the day, they were just undead Egyptian space terminators. And they still look that them. way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Mm -hmm. Kind of see a theme here, Eldari, Eldar, Krork, Orc, Necron, Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of... Oh my god, that's so generally bright. Sorry. Oh. Kind of shitty people. Not because they were personally shitty, but because That's their so lives bright. were awful. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence of like yeah, radiation so and a terrible planet they lived on, and everything just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. They really were looking for Rog Rod sounds like those they sandwiches. They were extremely you know? reliant on the hope that they would Something eventually broad. find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible hey, nature hey, hey. that they were thrust upon them. Listen, and therefore you they be could personally shitty too. 
dominant if you were race a in the galaxy. Okay? And they found They're all just group. petty They're bureaucrats. The and, and I, I love that for them. like the forerunners in Halo or the Zelnaga in Star Wars. They right? are these old ones were these sp strong old and pretty much omnipotent <laughs> beings and they of course knew the key to immortality so the necrons went to them and said please so they're human show us your ways and the old ones said, used to be right with the flesh Piss off not really they were a lot more humble about it but they did not want to share their secret of immortality no, they didn't. with the necrons the necrons of course took this very well <laughs> and waged war with them. hey god can i be immortal no. Okay. I will kill you, God. <laughs> They're badass. How many other races have killed gods you know and they're cool kind Actually, of under a this lot of united races, banner they're cool the necron different dynasties didn't really like each other yeah the dynasties but under this one man you know, the silent king he warring. thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the old ones out of spite for them war keeping in heaven baby the secret of immortality to them this was known as the War in Heaven, and this mm -hmm. is actually like a multi-stage war. Because during this War in Heaven, they discovered the Star Did gods. I skip a little of the video? Wait. Did I? This when? was known as the War in Heaven. Just now? And this is actually like a multi-stage war. Did I get because one man? during this War in Heaven, <laughs> they discovered the Star I think gods, I got one man. A whole new race of people known as the Catan. The as Tan. always. These star gods were also very much So like that's the blade that the assassin lady has. And she has a blade of that, right? The key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, hey, can you help hey. us fight off the old ones? Can you help us kill these old ones? You, the Catan. And the Catan said, yes. And in fact, we can help provide you with the immortality uh -oh. you so desperately seek. So uh -oh. the silent king of Spaghetti the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them. But this, of course, had been a horrendous trap. Uh -huh. And the Necrons Deceived. were dragged in chains to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as mm -hmm. their souls were ripped from their body and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They hmm. got chonk on the souls of the Necrons. That As this looks was their plan so all along, cool. they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron wow. tier and turned them all into Where is this from? Is this from Dark Crusade? Like, where is this image from that he's showing here? Robotic slaves just to serve their will. I really want to play with Dark their Crusade. New founded it's from Necron Gothica, Army, Gladi is Battle Fleet Gothic. They pointed their guns at the I old see. ones and the Catan continued it looks their domination amazing. of the stars and their genocide complete and full That's not Dark Crusade, it's way too high quality. <laughs> The old ones did their best to stave to it, it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for Wait. the Necron armies. The Eldari died complete and full genocide of these old ones. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off interesting i just assumed that the eldari and the orcs kind of you know came to being but they were rushed the into be making Necron made into army being. and the katan above them but there was absolutely no possible chance for them and the old ones were absolutely extinguished across the galaxy their entire race completely removed the old ones created them for the war in heaven. Genocide. Wow. However, during all this, the Catan, that is so, so interesting, infatuated with their victory, started fighting each other for fun, for sport, and for small differences. Doesn't matter. The Catan, with these over overpowered people, they're going to eventually hit each other at some point. And as they began just menially fighting each other, the Eldari and the Orcs actually started pushing on the Catan's borders a little bit, mm -hmm. giving them a little bit of a run for their money. And as this continued, this is when the the silent king who retained his consciousness decided to leap into action and start a full 
scale revolt against their Catan masters. And this yeah, the orcs were made was for killing. Bloody as the entire still Necron here. army was surged off to destroy these star gods. They were able to just after suffering horrendous losses, were able to turn the tide of the war. And they Sorry. took these Katam and they blasted them. Because as yeah. these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. And with the um, Necrons having the entire... Somebody said, orcs weaker than when they were originally engineered. I saw this being written earlier today in the chat. I don't know how much truth there is to it, but somebody said something like, Apparently, the orcs devolved because the Eldari fell and the Necrons went to sleep. Could that be? Also, with the Necrons going to sleep, it makes sense why the Eldari are rising, uh, why the Eldar rose to power. There was nobody to kind of check them. Right? Oh, it's because the old ones fell. Mm, I see, I see. The entirety of their old gods enslaved to them. They realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Krorks. Orcs need so constant they war to they develop. They were treated into giant stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength for when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully I theirs. love my little Necrons. And then some dingus now, why are they annoying on the battlefield? I mean, on the green console. What is and it now called? the Necrons are back and they see all these primitive mechanicus baby we are playing mechanicus we are awakening the necrons we are bringing them back to life of races on their lawns and they think get the fuck off of it the necrons are back super advanced they devolved because they were made only they to fight to reclaim the galaxy they <laughs> and so they forgot to get an off switch yep on a tabletop they're a lot like that Tons of undead Egyptian skeleton robots that when they die, they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating. I think they look cool. Kill. Tons of crazy stuff. But it's kind of just a skeleton, right? Like a few of them are nice, but I wouldn't get like 20 of them. You can use the Catan themselves oh, that looks as good. units to fight That with. looks good. It's pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the Fall yep. of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons okay. are all pretty substantial events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool. Oh, as the well. Tyranids, Here's huh? a good quote from a <laughs> wonderful Dawn of War game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind to the truth. When I uncovered the truth, yeah, their I models, too you know, they're nice, but they're just a little Deep bit like these catacombs skeleton. I was remade. Skeleton with Here, this. my brethren with that. slumber for eons while the living. That's why I like Oracon. Like At least he looks really my cool. My Lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world once more. Necrons are also pretty smug. Trays in the Infinite, especially. A little, little dickhead. But speaking of dickheads. We love Trays in the Infinite. Last race. Let's Tau talk Empire. Tau. We made a fucking oh, he didn't the say. Exact formation. Sorry, he didn't say why they were annoying on the battlefield, like on the Warhammer tabletop battlefield. He was saying how if you play orcs, like you're not a salty player, but if you play Necrons, you're super. You're super kind of, because they resurrect, because they keep reviving. They just get back up. You shoot three, they revive four. Okay. It's a try hard faction. I get it. I get it. I get it. They teleport a lot and they have this self-repair mechanic. Yeah, the little scarabs. Mm -hmm. of the Tau Empire they can roll a die to come back understood. after taking lethal. However, a long, long time ago. That's many annoying. I love ago, that. Uh, in the 40k world that is some imperial navigation vessels were going around through different areas wow. and they saw a primitive race blue people smacking each other with sticks and stones they thought yeah dumb xenos race who gives i know i'm pausing a lot this is something i hope he kind of explains in this video so what i know about the tau empire is they were primitive and then one day they weren't uh okay the shit and they bailed tell then me more this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area unable to be breached then once that warp storm six thousand years later yeah. subsided so hello just... those little sticks 
Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind, and all they were just, just little guys under one flag. Of the and then Tao six thousand years and later, they they're gigantic like gigantic starships, we've evolved. And Gundam robots and lasers and railguns and mechs, and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That is generally the Tau Empire. I uh, love they that. They have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. They probably were secretly uplifted by Eldars to fuck up the Imperium. So I do wonder if gods or chaos gods or something messed around there a little bit, right? If maybe somebody gave them a little bit of a push, a little bit of a, whoop, it's a conspiracy theory. These All theories are conspiracy theories the if you think about it. Of the greater good. The greater good is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely. Maybe it could have just been 6,000 years of development, right? Where that warp storm caused them all to unite. Because now they basically had to like hold each other for survival, right? Being isolated means you either attack yourselves or you team up. And if they teamed up, be the most like the covenant in Halo, where they have the overarching prophets being the ethereal. The storm who are might have sped up kind time. Of dicks and, and like to I like pull that strings theory. a little bit, but then you have all these different races directly underneath them. I like that theory a lot. Work together in this big group as this large foreboding race that tries to spread their weirdly pseudo religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place. They are not the psychers, greater... by the way. Ooh. That is generally the Tau. And if you're kind of wondering, like, what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're all about big robots and mechs. They have laser rifles and rail guns. They got giant mechs with tons of missile pods and heavy rail rifles and rail guns. They have guns, tiny souls. Burst hey, cannons their souls are perfectly average where they're from, okay? And, and that is It just looks small in this about, lighting. But you're probably thinking... Ayuki, thank you for the raid. This doesn't sound that what are you doing today, evil. darling? This doesn't sound very... Is this Grim what you Dark do Warhammer. when you're not moderating for right. me for free? The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying Grim Dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in Their the day. Their souls are perfectly they average. They like Stop having like, that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really like the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer didn't really like it that much. So, see, the Tau get a lot of hate. And a lot of that they really do look like Gundams. Oh my goodness. It's I think it's the white color. Perspective, but as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the 40k universe very well. They lack that super dark, dramatic, kind of high Their souls are only this has. small when they it's don't have cold. The weird, <laughs> kind of like grungy stuff <laughs> that Chaos or City Orcs do. And the Necrons and the Eldar have their own specific style as well. <laughs> the Tau really do look like something out of Gundam. And while it isn't necessarily a bad thing, it does definitely not fit too well. There's that. There's also the tabletop problem. Uh, in tabletop, Tau are horrible at melee combat, but exceptionally good at ranged combat. So they okay. blast everyone from really, really far away, and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee combat. Oh, I like so that. It Bureaucracy. it just forces you to bottleneck the game Bureaucracy. into one specific I love it. gameplay style, which is gun to gun. How it was explained to me. The Tau were fighting each other. One day, every single important person ever said to stop fighting, to look upwards to a greater good. And that's how they advanced so fast. There was no fighting between them for so long. Makes sense. And if you're doing gun Makes to gun, sense. they're going to win every time because they're the Tau. And the Tau are really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and Space such. Space communism. But this is actually one of the things hey. I wanted to end this video with. I mean. Is that the Tau, while they have their issues, they're you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make guys, plenty of Tau know. weeaboo jokes. Of course I will. But it's all generally in good fun. Anyone Frankly, who legitimately doesn't want to play my good guys are the dark. Are the Drukari. So. You pick 
what potato, you potato, think tomato, is tomato. Cool and what my cool guys are the one. Like. My my good guys are the ones who look now, the coolest. Factions so. get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. Necrons for life. You should only you be both playing what you think is cool. You like the look. You like the models. I like the look. If you're talking tabletop, that is what you should be going for every time. Is what you think is badass because things change all the time. <gasps> but the yeah. universe of Warhammer has so much going for it. Every faction has something oh. interesting. Every character. I'm in has my a React story, era. And there's a million stories to be told. The universe is vast and expensive. First things first. Uh, Bricky, thank you so much for letting me react to your video on Twitch television and on YouTube. I really, really appreciate it. I have learned a lot. We will talk about it later.